Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, also Red Circle, and the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on. Also, check us out on Off the Floor. That's winno.app. That's W I N N O dot A P P backslash Off the Floor. Get text directly to your phone from me, Alex Brady. And Greg, bypass Twitter, X, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Get your heat news directly from us. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network, including the sponsor of this episode. Hurricane season has already begun. you got to reach out to all pro construction builders now. Don't wait until the last minute. Get the storm windows. Get the storm doors. Mention Five Reasons. You'll get 10% off your entire offer or order. Reach out to Danny directly at 305-484-4429. That's 305-484-4429. 4429 or go to all pro construction builders.com locally made products, American made products, family business, everything you want. They're based in Dade County. They can service Broward and Monroe as well. Again, it's 305 484 4429. And now today's episode down to this gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where is the thing? You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck say, you in trouble, y'all. Check the floor plan. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick and Five Reasons Sports. i got Greg Sylvander. You can follow me at Greg Sylvander. Alex Toledo, you can follow me at Tropical Blanket. I feel like this is the first time in a while the three of us have been on together. We come to you on a Sunday night after Dwayne Wade's induction ceremony into the Hall of Fame. He was the closer. As usual, he stole the show. Um, I think it's pretty clear. You know, other speeches were were great, Dirk and Pop and and Parker and Powell. Uh, one of the great classes, uh, appropriate classes, arguably the best player to ever come out of Spain, the best player to ever come out of Germany, for sure. Uh, the best player to come out of France until maybe now. Uh, we'll see what happens with Victor. And, and then you have uh, one of the greatest American players, obviously, the best player to ever come out of Robbins, Illinois, uh, Dwayne Wade. And then you had, you know, arguably the greatest coach in history. So terrific class, guys that all had ties to each other. Uh, Dwayne's sweet speech was emotional. He hit all the right notes. I know there's going to be a mention of who he didn't mention. I don't really think that matters so much. Uh, I think what matters is that you had a guy, and I said this all week, somebody who was – not really comfortable speaking in public when he first came into the NBA. And then he's commanding an audience for 27 minutes to close a hall of fame speech. And he leaves everybody in tears. Um, That shows you how much Dwayne has grown. And, and obviously he represented the city, the community, uh, the the franchise, the fans, uh, his teammates, as well as I think you possibly could represent. Um, And that's why he's so beloved in the city. And I, I said it, uh, without going too much in this speech. And actually, the Heat actually used my voice in their little video that they put out this morning. Uh, most important athlete in South Florida sports history. And it's no slight to Dan Marino or Larry Zonka or anybody else who's come before or since or now Messi arriving or anything like that. But Dwayne Wade was drafted by the Heat, just like Danny was drafted by uh, the Dolphins. But Dwayne brought championships, and that wasn't uh, necessarily Dan's fault, but – I just think the impact that Dwayne has had overall on the city, and I'll I'll tell one story and then we'll move on from Dwayne and we're going to do a Hall of Fame episode in a little different way. I recall being at Jason Taylor's uh, golf tournament at Rolling Hills uh, in Davie near where the Dolphins used to train until a couple of seasons ago. And I just, Danny was there, Zoe was there. um, And I just remember talking to Dan when he was on the golf course and both he and Zoe had somewhere to be that night. Uh, this was during, I believe, uh, the 08 through 10 period, 2010 period. Danny had to go down and see Dwayne play. And to me, that tells you everything and sort of the magnitude of, of the athlete, the impact, the show stopping uh, and everything else that you had. The, the, guy, the other guy who's in the conversation, who was absolutely must see television for a long time, uh, he wanted to go see Dwayne. And, and I, I think that pretty much. Uh, says it all. But we're going to pivot forward from the Hall of Fame a little bit. We're going to cover some Hall of Fame related topics. Okay, so I'm going to throw these at you guys. We'll kind of go one by one on them. Uh, Somebody who was not there yesterday, again, I wouldn't look into it too much. This is not his thing, uh, is Jimmy Butler. He said in an interview 
that if he went into the Hall of Fame, he would not show up. Um, I don't think that's completely a joke, actually. <laughs> I say it'd be about 50-50. We know Jimmy's not into the pomp and the circumstance. And to a certain degree, Jimmy Jimmy even said to me when I asked him about LeBron playing until 40, he says, I'm not playing that long. And like Jimmy may be selling coffee in the south of France somewhere, okay, or playing soccer on the beach, okay, in, in, uh, in South Africa. You don't, you don't know where Jimmy's going to end up, okay? But – what are his chances of making the Hall of Fame legitimately? Uh, and, and I know there are some numbers on this, but there's also how voters would feel about it. Right now, if, if Jimmy doesn't play another game, does Jimmy Butler make the Hall of Fame great? Well, I will defer to basketball reference, who says that Jimmy Butler has about a 73% chance if he never plays another game of making it into the Hall of Fame. And I think that that sounds about right, somewhere in the 75% chance range. Because this, I think with this Jimmy Butler, he has ascended to a different place than he was prior to being in Miami because he's doing it late in postseasons. Um, and he's doing it often late in postseasons. But I hate to do this because I say it over and over. The Miami Heat's goal is not to always win championships. It's to continuously compete for championships. But in this case, when we're splitting hairs on great players, I think Jimmy needs to close the deal to make sure that that probability maybe goes up from 73% to around 93%, which was more, um, you know, in the range of guys that are, you know, let's say Paul George, Kyrie Irving. Those are players that currently are tracking in the 93 percentile in getting probability to the hall of fame per basketball reference. So Jimmy is tracking behind them, which then when I say that out loud, I'm like, what the hell have they been watching the last three years? It's interesting, Alex, we, you went, you, we found this list, right? And it's really hard to decipher this list. I mean, they have a whole series of qualifications and numbers and awards and all this that they put together to say what somebody's probability is. Uh, but the Heat currently have, <laughs> with, I guess, three players on their roster who are, according to this, if not locks, pretty close to locks to go into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Kyle Lowry is 86 percentile. Kevin Love is 73 percentile, or 73.5 percentile. And Jimmy Butler is right behind him at seven, basically 73 even. Um but if I was to say to you, I, I, this, is, this is the interesting debate on this, because I, I know, look, Kyle's won a championship, okay? Uh, Kevin has won a championship, okay? Obviously not in Miami. Uh, they both did so as core pieces. Kevin was probably the third best player, I think it's fair to say, on that Cavs team. Um, and Kyle, I guess you can make the argument, was the second best player? I, second or third, Siakam played a pretty big role during that run. I mean, Kawhi was first for sure. Jimmy's been the best player on a team that almost won once, got to the finals another time, got within a shot, his shot, of going to the finals another time. If I was to say to you, who has had the better career to this point? Jimmy probably has more left in the tank, we would all argue, than Kyle or, or, or Kevin. Who's had a better career to this point, though? Jimmy, Kyle, or Kevin? Oh man, always hitting me with the tough questions. Uh, I got a softball compared to you. <laughs> that one's tough, man. Um, I would say off the top of my head, my instinct is to say Kyle last just because he had well, you know what? You can almost say a similar thing about Jimmy where they both were kind of late bloomers, but I think Kyle mm -hmm. was more of a late bloomer, like he had multiple stops before you know he really blossomed into kind of a you know an all star point guard. Whereas Jimmy, you know, he blossomed right there on that first team. It took a little, you know, it, it took a while, but it wasn't that long either. Like by his, what was it, like third season, he, in fourth season, he was kind of uh, a rising all-star talent, that, that a two-way player that everybody could see. But, yeah, that's where my instinct goes immediately to Kyle because it hasn't, even though he's older, he hasn't had a sustained, you know, prime. He didn't really have that because it happened so much later. But the thing is, these championships, right, like, them winning that championship, I think, between him and Kevin is why they both have a higher. That's why it's why you would think they have a higher chance than um, than Jimmy. But then you kind of go down a couple more spots, right? Like right in that same range, three more spots down is Clay Thompson, who's won four championships. And I right. understand he wasn't the number one on those teams, 
He was definitely the number, the, the second option on the, the first time they won. Se- second option. Would you say the he was time. the. No, but no, I'm saying he was the second option one. Yeah, first time. He yeah. wasn't the other time. <laughs> but even on the teams without Durant, would you say he, he was he, the second most important player or third with Draymond? Oh, well, most important is, is a different conversation. We're doing semantics now. No, you know no, me. we're not. Because I, I, I'm asking, well, was Kyle, okay, on the Toronto to me, team in 19, was exactly. he the was second most to... important player? Would you argue that? I was about to make that parallel because to me, Clay and Kyle are kind of similar in that way in like the, the roles that they played for the championship teams, except Clay did it three more times. You know what I mean? Like yeah. in that role. So it's to me, it's and I, and I, I went in ahead and, and read how basketball reference um, kind of makes these calculations. And like you mentioned, they, they, they take into account um, awards. uh win shares, games played, minutes, points, rebounds, assists, and they're just kind of throwing it all together to come up with this percentage, right? To me, I feel like probably something should be more weighted than others. I think that's probably like a uh, where where maybe they can improve upon the formula, but I'm not a mathematician, so I don't know what I'm talking about here. I just think it's crazy that Clay is not a little bit higher because usually when a guy is that big of a deal for mm-hmm. four championships, like I would think Clay is a lock. And, you know a what 73, I mean? and a 73 win team, even though that team didn't win a championship. Um, if you if you look at that list, what's also interesting, Kyle Lowry's already uh, ahead of Tim Hardaway. Uh, he, he's only like a slot ahead, but he's, in terms of percentage, he's about five percentage points and, higher. And Tim is ahead of Kawhi, Draymond, Love, Jimmy, Clay. Like it's a little bit of a weird list because they're all pretty close to each other. It's not like well, the Kawhi one is the Kawhi one is weird because Kawhi to me is a lock regardless. I I I understand the injuries in recent years, but I mean he. he Here's the thing, like if you were at one point a top five player in the league, okay, and you have a title to your name, you got to get in. I mean, right? I mean, that because okay, let's even go. To, let's extrapolate a little bit with Jimmy as we kind of talk about the other guys. Jimmy, and I think Jimmy's had a better career, by the way. I know I never answered the question. I think well, I well, that's number one. Well, we're gonna follow on that because okay, so Jimmy, we would all argue is a top fifteen player in the NBA right now, right? I mean, there could be some dispute about 10, but uh, for some, okay, a playoffs, different regular season. But, I mean, he just was second team all NBA, right? So that puts him in the top 10 or somewhere in that area, right? He's top 15 player. Was Kyle Lowry ever a top 15 player in the league? I would be reluctant to say for an entire season. I think that he bottled that up for some playoff runs, and he's made some crazy moments, and him and DeMar DeRozan did great things, but – Top fifteen. I mean, I don't know. Does he have any all NBA uh, all NBA teams at all? I, I would have to look. Has Kevin Love been a top fifteen player at times in his career? I think you can make that argument, right? Probably, probably. It wasn't that long. It wasn't that long, but it was a while there where he was in Minnesota. Where he was where they, they did a lot of yeah. losing. Correct. Yeah. So it may have. But been, I think that was the reputation. It, right. It may have been like a misguided hype. But there was a time when he was getting 30 and 15 every single night in Minnesota, and they thought he was, you know, basically a top 10 player. That's and he was a lock all-star. He was a yep. lock all-star. Kyle was not a lock all-star. Now, his Kyle's position was probably deeper. Um, his competition was probably a little bit greater. Kyle, Kyle's made All-NBA third team once in 2016. So that's his All-NBA resume. And Jimmy's made all NBA, one of the All-NBA teams five times, right? Hasn't he? Yeah, I just did this comparison. Kyle, is, Kyle was a six-time All-Star. I think how many times has Jimmy made it? Five, but two of okay. the times it's almost because he didn't want to go. Yeah, yeah. I see. That's where this stuff matters. But again, that doesn't even matter to Jimmy. Like, so it's see, just for the record. Bas- basketball Reference is taking this stuff into account, and that's why I think some of this stuff, like something, should weigh right. more than others in their calculation. But again. I'm not going to get into like I don't know but anything about math. Do you know how math. crazy it is just to look at the Heat list as we look at, again at the list of players that have come through this organization? I mean, because I mean, just look at this list. They have Zoe 83rd. Now he was a 93 percentile, and again, the only reason he wasn't 100 was because of time he missed. Uh, but even going back to the top, okay, so number two on their list was LeBron James, Miami Heat player. Number eight, Shaquille O'Neal, Miami Heat player. Dwayne Wade, 19. Miami Heat player. Uh, going down a little bit further, uh, Gary Payton, again, towards the end of his career with Miami, 38th on the list, Miami Heat player. Ray Allen, 43rd. Again, not his best years with Miami, but still productive like Gary was when he was with Miami. 43rd on the list, Miami Heat player. I mean, that's all Miami Heat players. 
in the top 50. Uh, add to that the guy they had on the coaching staff, Bob McAdoo, uh, 60th. So we, we won't we won't count him. That's unfair, obviously. And where's Dame? Uh, and that's what we're going to get to after the break. So before we get to, by the way, Tony Parker was 77th on this list. Okay, so I, I, there was some questioning whether Tony was deserving. Tony was deserving. I don't know if he was deserving first ballot with this class. I felt like he was a slight step down from Dirk and Dwayne. Um, but sure. actually, Tony compares pretty favorably with Powell, actually. Uh, the, to me, there were two tiers to this class, uh, which which I think most people reflected. But by the way, Zoe... 83rd on the list. I mean, these are all Miami Heat players. And now you've got Kyle 92nd on the list. Again, obviously not his best seasons in Miami. Tim Hardaway 96th on the list. Kevin Love 104. Jimmy Butler 105. And by the way, he's not in yet. Amari Stoudemire played for the Heat. 106. Uh, 73% chance for Amari. And by the way, I think Amari will get in. Eventually, uh, the numbers were kind of staggering, even if uh, the production waned in later years, the defense wasn't so good and there was never a finals appearance. Uh, but he was the best player in New York for about a year. And that probably helped. Joe Johnson on this list, too. Uh, you know down. what? That's another good one. I didn't even think of that. Joe Johnson. I bet you he is on this list. But <laughs> Jermaine O'Neal. Jermaine. Well, let's see where Jermaine. Well, well, Joe Johnson was like the ultimate compiler. 126 on the list. 51 percent chance. And Jermaine is at uh, just under 32. 32%. If not for that playoff series of Miami. By the way, look who's <laughs> right under Jermaine O'Neal. Do you see that? Yeah, Reggie Miller. Insane. And he got in. 138th. And, and see, but because Reggie's stats were not I good. think that's what it is. But I see, that's, that's the is. thing. It's the playoff yeah. stuff for him. And that's like why Kyrie, with him at the 93 percentile, it's 20 percentage points ahead of Jimmy, for instance. I think that all has to do with... Kyrie's gigantic shot in Golden State. Yeah. And the fact that they won a championship. That stuff, I think, just has to well, ultimately. Kyrie's matter. speech is going to be fascinating. But I mean, that you, you've you got, and it was funny too, is Ben he Waller. Like not let him talk. The they, first he person may, to not get a speech. <laughs> they may not let him speak. Uh, ben Wallace, th th see, this one's interesting to me too. And then we'll pivot to Dame here in a second. Ben Wallace, 130th on list, 45%, but he's in. Um, and he was in in a weak class. I think that played into it, and it took him some time. But, like, it, it, some of this is injury-related, too. Like, Penny Hardaway's 143rd, 29% chance. Penny Hardaway was a better player than probably two-thirds of the guys ahead of him. He just couldn't, couldn't stay healthy long enough. Uh, and, and you know, and you look at him, and then you look at Grant Hill, and you're kind of like, okay, Grant had more of those years. Tracy had more of those years. But Penny, at his peak, was every bit as good as Tracy or Grant. Um, I, I, I sort of loop link the three of those guys together is kind of Penny, got, another guy who played for the heat. Listen, you can't have John wall on a list of probability getting into the hall of fame ahead of Penny Hardaway. No, Get out of here with that. You, you can't. And by the way, Yao Ming is in at fifty, and he was 53%. Um, and, and Yao again, that was a lot of it, the injury. So it, it is okay. So a couple of things before we move on today, one is, the Hall of Fame itself is arbitrary to a large degree because first thing, nobody announces who the voters are. That's one of the things in baseball, you know, look, it's a silly ballot that they send out in football. I think they actually do the best job because there's one representative from every city. Um, I'm, I've never been a fan of who the representative is for Miami, but I, I agree with the process. Uh, it was Edwin Pope for a long time, which is who it should be, but it was passed on to someone else who I'm not a fan of, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, but then they have other representatives from other cities, but they get in a room and they literally argue for the players. And, you know, everybody takes up a case. And this one person in Miami took up Zach for a long time until they finally got Zach in. It's the best process, the, the Football Hall of Fame. And it's the clearest because it's about what happened in the NFL. Uh, it's not about what happened in college. It's not, a, there's a separate college one that, that they do. Basketball is weird. OK, it's like you even saw that last night. There were a couple of people that nobody had heard of who were in there. Now, I'm not talking about Becky Hammond, but I'm talking about there were a couple of people who, who people hadn't heard of who were in there with D Dwayne and Dirk. OK, there are different levels to this. But then this chart is extremely arbitrary, obviously beyond the arbitrariness of the other. <laughs> when you, you have you have some well, of the things John Wall had a Hardaway. Is it arbitrary if it's a, if it's just basically a formula? 
You know what I mean? I mean, it is, but but you know, it's like it's like with computers or AI, like exactly. It's, it's almost it's, the opposite. There's a human behind the AI, right? That's like, what I was about to say. It's almost the opposite of arbitrary because there's no human element to it. So it's just strictly based on the, the factors that it lays out on their website, right? The, the stats, the minutes played. The awards, the, the well, Alex, that, that's Miller, the flaw in the stat. That's the flaw yeah, in the stat. Yeah. But here's the thing: like Reggie Miller, okay, belongs in the Hall of Fame, even though this thing says he doesn't. And and but Reggie Miller belongs in the Hall of Fame, even though a lot of the the hype about Reggie was about what he did against the New York market team. Like it, it was the fact that Reggie had those moments in the Garden against Spike. Like if you if you took Reggie Miller and like Reggie Miller and Mitch Richmond. The majority of people from that era would tell you Mitch was a better player yep. than Reggie. Right. It was just Reggie's playoff performances and also keeping Indiana in a play. Like they were always in the playoffs every yeah. year back then. Whereas like, let's just be honest, Mitch Richmond never had a shot for most of his career. No, And actually the ring that Mitch got, Mitch has a ring and Reggie doesn't. But the ring that Mitch got was playing no minutes for a Laker team. Nobody even knew he was on the team. Uh, and Mitch got in, but like I, they, they introduced somebody yesterday during that, uh, uh, during Dirk speech where they showed Michael Finley, Michael Finley was probably every bit as good as Reggie Miller. Actually. Like he's one of the guys who was kind of lost to history. And, and there were those players all over the place. Alex English is in the hall of fame, I believe. Right. Yes. But if you look at his numbers, I've always said this and Carmelo's numbers, they are the same. They even played in Denver beginning. They're exactly the same. The reason that Carmelo was more hyped than Alex English was, he came about in more of a social media age. Uh, he And he was obviously part of that great class. He won a national championship at Syracuse. And then he went to New York. Like that's And that that makes a huge difference here. It's like how if Derek Jeter was a shortstop on the Kansas City Royals, we may never have heard much about Derek Jeter, but he had all those moments in the playoffs. So I, I think, again, it is flawed. And that's why I just want to say this. Jimmy Butler's already a Hall of Famer. Like, Whatever the percentages say and some of the guys that are above him, if you drag a team to the NBA Finals twice in four years, yeah. you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with LeBron, okay, you get close to the Finals another year, you're an elite defender also, which a lot of these guys above him on the list were not, uh, he's already a Hall of Famer. The question is, will he go in as one of those first ballot, gotta see Hall of Famers? If he wins a championship or two, yes. If not, he may be a guy who waits two, three, four, five years, kind of like Timmy did, um, for different reasons, obviously, than was the case with Timmy. All right, when we come back, we're going to get into the, the part most of you will find more interesting about this. What about the Hall of Famer who's going to join the Heat next? Want to talk about a couple great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network? Includes our friends over at Prize Picks. Use the code 5 F I V E. Get that initial deposit matched up to $100. Again, you can play Prize Picks. On pretty much anything. So the NFL preseason's going on right now. You got the NFL futures. You can play the MLS. You can play Messi. I hope that you've been doing that. Although you would have got actually, you would have lost on his goals the other night. Uh, but also they're going to have the FIBA basketball on there too. So you want to play you uh, the guys on USA, Canada. RJ Barrett had a big game tonight. You can start playing all of that on Prize Picks. Use the code five F I V E. Get that initial deposit matched up to a hundred dollars. Also check out water cleanup, water cleanup of Florida. You can find them at WCUFL.com. That's WCUFL.com. This is where you want to go. If you've got mold in your house, you got leaks in your house. They do the leak detection. They fix the water damage, but also they've got a preventative program. Make sure that you get involved in that as well, because you don't want to wait and have to deal with the insurance companies. No matter how good the job these guys do, you'll never see your money from the insurance companies. We know that. So reach out to WCUFL.com. Get your help now, 561-408-7835. It's 561-408-7835. Reach out, reach out to Michael, Robert, and his team based in Boca Raton. They serve his entire area, and they're huge Miami sports fans as well. If you've got the schmutz. They got the guts. All right, so let's speak to the guy who may join next, uh, Dame Lillard. Where is he on this list, guys? He is a pretty respectable. Bear with me. He's 70th overall with a 96% chance in the 96th percentile uh, in getting in, sandwiched in between Willis Reed, Dikembe Matumbo, Jerry Lucas, and Tracy McGrady, with Giannis just beneath him at 74 on the list with a 94 
percent and ninety five percent chance, basically. All right. So for more, if you look at it for for active players, Dame is is eighth right now. In, okay. Uh, who, who who are the seven ahead of him? So if you scroll down on the same page you're looking at, it, it, it filters it to just active, and it's LeBron, KD, Chris Paul, Steph, Harden, Russ, and AD. Can't wait for Harden's speech. <laughs> I asked for a trade from this team and for this team and from this team and from this team. Um, okay, all of those guys are getting in, though. Uh, Russ is getting in no matter what people's feelings may be about him. Harden, my jokes aside, he's getting in. Uh, AD is getting in, uh, even with all the injuries and everything else. Obviously, Bron, Chris Paul are locks. Steph is as big a lock as you can possibly get. Uh, the, Steph is first ballot. LeBron's first ballot. Um, CP is, is first ballot, okay? Uh, even without championship, uh, he's first ballot. KD is first ballot, okay? Hard and likely first ballot, but again, you know, I have my own personal feelings about that. And then... You get to Dame and then Giannis. But just to give it a context of where Dame is on their probability list and the players around him, he's right behind right now. Again, the career is not done. He's right behind Carmelo, who's not in yet, only because it hasn't been enough time, but he'll get in. Uh, Nash, George Gervin, we just saw at the big three. Dominique, Vern Mickelson, I, I cannot say I'm familiar with. Uh, Willis <laughs> Reed, who, who passed recently. Dikembe. Uh, who I felt was deserving. There were some who thought he wouldn't get in right away, but he did. And he's right ahead of Jerry Lucas, Tracy McGrady, Bob Lanier, and as you mentioned, Giannis, Vince Carter, Tony Parker, Paul George is right beneath, uh, and Kyrie. Paul George is ranked too high on this list, I think. Um, yeah. That's, that's a big takeaway for me. Uh, but it is interesting, too, that where Giannis is ranked. I'm surprised Dame is ahead of him, considering what Giannis has already accomplished. But maybe they're taking into account Giannis has a lot more years to accomplish a lot more. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think so. I mean, I think I, – I mean, at the end, Giannis will be ahead of Dame on the all-time lists. Um, but I, I think it is about how many years it's been going on. And, you know, look, Giannis's first couple of years, I mean, that you know, there wasn't a hell of a lot accomplished. Dame was a star from the start. You know, so I, I think that's probably that probably plays into it. But anyway, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. OK, and this is where I want to get into this part of it, because there are some parallels and there are some things that are not parallels to the Dwayne situation. It's obvious, OK, that if you are an organization, you want it to go like it went with Dwayne at the Hall of Fame. You want the let's go blank chance. You want. All you know, your royalty or alumni, or at least the majority of them. Of course, King James was not there, but the majority of your royalty alumni to be there celebrating it. You want your young players, like say the Heat had Bam, uh, being there to soak it all in. It becomes a. It's like a. I mean, the Heat they have had so many players there. It's almost like an annual retreat to Springfield at this stage, right? If you're the Blazers, that that was the dream, right? The dream was. Dame was going to spend his entire time with your organization. He was going to be your Hall of Famer because Clyde Drexler didn't finish in Portland. He had to go to Houston to win a championship. Now, he got close. The, the Blazers put talent around him, unlike uh, for years they did. I mean, that team, and most of those guys, unfortunately, have passed. But that team had, you know, Jerome Kersey and Duckworth and Terry Porter and, I mean, Cliff Buck Williams and Cliff Robinson. Okay, they had – that was an excellent group, okay, that they had. Uh, and then it was only, you know, after he, you know, he moved on to Houston that he won the championship. Um, they drafted other guys they thought could be Hall of Famers. They drafted Greg Oden over Kevin Durant because they thought he could be a Hall of Famer. They drafted Sam Bowie over Michael Jordan because if you're drafting somebody second overall, you think that guy can be the Hall of Famer. They had health problems both. Brandon Roy was on a Hall of Fame path. Uh, he was the closest thing to Dwayne in a lot of different ways. Not as athletic, but terms of being a two guard, the physicality, the two way play and all that stuff that you had during that period of time. Okay. Brandon Roy, if he'd stayed healthy, he was a clutch guy too. He would have been a hall of famer. Dame is the one who's worked out. All right. And that is why this is so painful for the Blazers. And I know when, when I say, well, they should do right by Dame. Okay. So that everything ends well. Blazer fans will come to me and say, well, look, Dwayne left because the Heat didn't do right by him. And so what I say to the Blazers fans is this, and to the Blazers, do right by the guy now. <laughs> Let him go win his championship now because he can't do it somewhere else. Don't make him, can't do it with you. Don't make him resent you 
for the way that you're holding him hostage, okay? And then in two years or three years, okay, I'm sure that the Heat, whoever's running them at that stage, whether it's Pat Riley or Eric Spolstra or Andy Ellisberg or Adam Simon or Shane Battier or who knows who it is, okay? Or Dwayne Brady Wade. Hawk. Right, or Brady Hawk, more likely, <laughs> right? Will do right by the Portland Trailblazers. And if they want his $63 million in the last year of his contract, they can have it, okay? And he can finish his career in Portland and make nice. But the reason that everything worked out so well with the Heat and there was goodwill to go back to, even after as badly as the Heat handled the situation with Dwayne, not just in 16, but also in 14 to a degree, and certainly in 15 also, is because there were championships won before that. Dwayne got what he needed from them, all right? And then he was able to come back in peace, okay? The Blazers cannot provide that the way that the Heat provided it to Dwayne Wade. So know your damn limitations. Send the, your Hall of Famer where he wants to be. Do right by him. And eventually, whether by buyout or trade of $61 million contract, or maybe in free agency, if he wants to sign to the mid-level with Portland in the year, what would it be, 2027 or something like that? Great. Have him be Scoot's backup for 15 minutes a game, okay, 20 minutes a game, like Dwayne Wade was for Goran Dragic, okay, or something along those lines. That's the way that I see this. You do not want your organization looking foolish in this situation. And if, and also, I got to think, if I'm Portland and I'm looking at that show, that celebration that the Heat had, like, is this really the organization you want to be taking on in this way? Yeah. Greg. It, I, you beat me to where I was going to head in terms of the fact that it is a reunion there and it's not a Portland Trailblazer reunion. <laughs> that's for damn sure. And Sam Bowie is not showing up either. So it's like – um this Dame is one of the unique players in Portland Trailblazer history. Like other than Clyde, he's the best Blazer ever. He has to be. So I would say that it's a tough spot for them because you're right. Dwayne had built up the equity of the three championships, and that's going to always bring you back to a centered perspective that Dame's just going to be able to, if he goes elsewhere and wins a ring, I think it's an interesting dynamic for him if Portland and he end on such a sour note. And it, it's ultimately also, I think everyone should remember how Pat felt after he basically, you know, like when Dwayne left, it was all in the name of, I'm trying to make the team better for you, but mm -hmm. we need you to do this. But we're trying to stay relevant when they actually should have just maxed Dwayne in that moment, right? I think the Portland Trailblazers will look back and say that the little bit of different maybe trade package uh, value that they're going to get in this deal, it's not worth hard like messing up the relationship with Dame Lillard because they're not going to have a bunch more Dame Lillards come through there. And like, so I just think it's a, it's something that I think if, if Pat Riley had a do over, he would have done it differently. And the trailblazers are going to feel the exact same way if they don't send Dame where he wants to go. Alex, I think even as heat observers, heat media, heat fans, I think there's general agreement that the ring that LeBron won in Cleveland was his most significant, more, more significant than the two in Miami, more significant than the one in Los Angeles that that was the one, right? I mean, can we agree on, on that? Like, could we be, can we, can we, at it least hurts, but yeah. yeah. Right. Alex. Yes. No, he's got mute. He's got mute. Okay. He's, 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 he doesn't you hear me? It, it hurt. It hurts to say it, but like, and there's yeah. a part of me that wants to be like, his first title is the most important, but we all know that the Cleveland storybook thing with that team against that warriors bunch. It's always it was a cuter story for sure. Correct. Right. Okay, but here's the difference, and I'll, I'll let you. I'll, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you. Well, right, but I'll let you close on this. But I, 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 here's the difference. Okay, is that when LeBron went back to Cleveland, things were rigged basically for him to have a chance to win again. Like, because Cleveland had sucked for so long that they accumulated these first round picks. They got Kyrie. Okay, they screwed up the Anthony Bennett pick. They screwed up some other picks, but they got enough of them. They kept winning the damn lottery, and so they got they got Kyrie. I don't know if it was pure chance or the league felt bad for them or whatever it was. Okay. But they got Kyrie. 
and they got Wiggins, who they were able to flip for love. And so they had like an Insta team for LeBron when he came back. Can we agree that there is no way Portland is going to be able to put together the kind of team for Dame while he's there or even when he returns that is going to allow him to have that moment, okay, that LeBron had in Cleveland? Is it fair to say? Do you see any path, whether it's with Scoot or what you get for Simons or what you Man, get for Scott, hell no. That hell Joe no. Cronin is going to be able to put together what David Griffin did with a hell of a lot of help from the league, by the way. I love Griff, but come on, um, in Cleveland. Any chance? No, no, it's not happening. No, I mean, like honestly, the the best. Uh, the, the, I feel like everybody knows Dame to the Heat is going to happen eventually, and I feel like the the there's like a one percent chance that they somehow like land maybe like a Siakam because there's like rumors about him. You know what I mean? Like that's the one type of scenario I can see. Like oh, maybe something changes then, right? Because obviously Siakam's a very good player. Dame has been asking that, but even then, like. That team obviously does not compare to what those uh, Cleveland teams had in talent. And I just think everything you guys were saying before was just so right. Like, I feel like last night, the Hall of Fame ceremony, I would, and you could say this any year probably if you look through the class, but honestly, just looking at the guys that were there last night, like that was a testament to, I think, um, teams who built great relationships with their players and lasting relationships, right? When you look at Tony, when you look at Dirk, when you look at Dwayne, and even though there was troubles there, they, they, they fixed it up. Um, I think that was, that's kind of the theme when you look at those guys and even Powell to a lesser degree, cause it wasn't with one team, but you know, he, he was talking very, you know, nicely about both the Grizzlies and the Lakers in his speech. Um, so I just think after that, like the, the, the takeaway for me is, is a lot like what you guys are saying. It's just, you can't burn that bridge. And I know I've said that I've hammered that over and over. It's just like, at some point there's, you cross the line. If you're the Blazers um, front office, you cross that line, that threshold from doing your job and negotiating to, Oh man, at some point you're just trying your superstar who, <laughs> you know, all the kind of noise and, and, and some of the reporting has said that in the past, they kind of promised that they were going to build that team around him. So when people want to bring up, oh, he's on a – let me do my nerd voice here. He's on a four-year contract. Oh, he, he's going to have to wait for free agency. There's two-way promises, and, like, the one side already broke their promise, and I just think the way it's gone out, like, if you keep dragging this out and just – if it's going to feel like a try at some point if you're Damian Lillard, right? It's going to feel like, wow, after every after 11 years that I spent in this franchise – that couldn't that the one real star he had next to him, Lamarcus Aldridge, who was there when they drafted him, left, left, and they couldn't bring anybody else to come close to replicating that. No shots at CJ McCollum, and then they completely broke their promise and drafted his replacement and two 19 year olds. Like the whole thing is just ridiculous. Just I think at some point they're gonna have to take what's there, and it, it feels like you know it, we're pleading for it because we all need Damian Lillard. <laughs> to end up on the heat for the sake of this podcast network but really like the 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 blazers need dame litter to to still like them when this is all said and done like what were the 11 years for like what what happens if this gets ugly and then whenever he's in trying it's just like an awkward situation he doesn't talk much about the blazers because it went down in a bad way like they have to avoid that and joe cronin is going to get fired if they burn that bridge like there's just no coming back from that and to, to that leads me to two things. One is Aldridge had to go to one of the two elite organizations in the sport. He went to the Spurs. Okay. Um, and, and the other part of this is, uh, that we haven't talked about a lot is ultimately it's not Joe Cronin. Okay. Who's going to be pilloried for this because Joe Cronin's probably not going to be having a job at a certain point. Okay. It's going to be the Allen family. It's going to be ownership. It, and, you know, Paul Allen's not there anymore, obviously, passed. Um, but Jody Allen took over, and it's going to be ownership that, that gets the brunt of this until until the team has moved to someone else because, uh, you know, it happens under your watch. We see it in Miami. We see it still with the reactions, you know, to the Arison family about Dwayne not being part of the organization. And, I mean, th there's nothing parallel that the Arisons have done to Dwayne to what is going on with Dame right now in Portland. So, uh, you know, and, Dame, and and Dwayne came back. I mean, we're not talking about that he didn't let Dwayne come back and play for the team. No, yeah. they, they – got to say, they it's warm and fuzzy. Yeah. That Hall of Fame, like, entire experience was so warm and fuzzy for the Heat fan that at some point it's like you almost have to, like, let that 
water go under the yeah, bridge. Yeah, just let it Dwayne. go at this point. Like, yeah. I, I mean, it's again, it's not like Dwayne didn't come back and play. It's not like the social media account has been running nonstop Dwayne stuff for the past two weeks. Like, there's no sign of any bitterness. We can say whether they went overboard or not. The fans don't think so. The fans don't think so. The fans ate up every piece of Dwayne content that came their way this week and would have taken more, okay? So, I, but ultimately, it comes down to the people who are stewards of the franchise in that particular city, which is ultimately the ownership of the franchise. It's them that are going to, they, they're going to bear the brunt of this. If Dame hates that place. And, so, and I'm not talking about the city. Cause we know he likes the city just in an album release party there, all the rest of that stuff. Okay. I, that that's not going to go away. He fit in that city. Um, they embraced him. They love their stars there. Okay. I, I can tell it's a great basketball city. Really. I like the city personally, actually. I always enjoyed traveling Portland. I missed when, the Sonics moved because that was my favorite trip was the, the Portland Seattle trip. But I just, I'm just saying like, it's just, it's bad karma. It's just bad all the way around at this point. And it, you, you want to have that moment with Dame and you want to, and you talk, you mentioned pow and I'm glad you mentioned pow Alex, people should look back on the way the Grizzlies handled his situation when uh, it came to the end of that. And, and he got sent to the, the Los Angeles Lakers. Okay. He didn't demand getting sent to the Lakers, but everybody knew that was the place that ultimately would be the best fit for him. And that came after Kobe had asked for a trade, okay, and didn't end up going to Chicago or somewhere else. But Kobe, I didn't want to play with Bynum anymore. He was frustrated with the process. They got him Pau Gasol, and again, they won the two championships. And Pau had a big part in those two titles, particularly the last one when he was actually their best player in the finals. They took care of Pau in Memphis. They actually traded him for his brother, of course. And then they took care of his brother, too, by the way. Um, and, and that stuff, again, that stuff gets remembered. It gets remembered. Even And, and, I, and got I just, both of them championships. Exactly. Right. So, right. That's exactly right. Mark got a championship in Toronto. Powell got a championship in Los Angeles. That's It's a player's league. And particularly if it's a player who's respected, who's done the right things. Dame Lillard um, has been every bit as good a steward of basketball in Portland as Dwayne Wade has been in Miami. He deserves the right to go where he wants to go. Be another Hall of Famer on the Heat, along with Jimmy Butler, <laughs> Kevin Love, and wherever he's playing next year, Kyle Lowry. Have a good night, everybody. Water cleanup of Florida, prize picks, and all pro construction builders.